Yo, what's going on? We're going to jump right into it. I'm about to be tattooing a lightning bolt on the inside of the inner bicep of this guy. Uh, it's going to be fairly simple. A nice line work piece. A uh, solid packed in black for the drop shadow. And I'm going to just go over some of the equipment that I'm using first. The first thing, uh, the thing that I'm going, that I'm using today is T-Tech brand needles. They're some of the top brand needles when it comes to lining, uh, when it comes to cartridges. They're the closest thing you're going to get to a traditional bar and needle setup. And especially if you want those thicker, thicker lines, as you see here on this stencil, it's a bold line that we're going to be getting this guy set up with. And this is their generation one tattoo cartridges. Uh, I believe they're called like the paperbacks or paper cartridge or something like that. But you can go to ttech.com and check that out. They're a company based out of Canada. So if you're in the U.S., they're pretty close to us and their shipping doesn't take too long. Um, and as you see here now, I'm starting to pull this line here. I'm using actually a nine round liner. I'm going in pretty light on the first pass because I'm going to end up scoping that line out to be thicker. Um, I would have used or could have used an eight round shader, but I still wanted the crispiness of it without it of a more modern look without it being a traditional setup look. I wanted to actually have that squared off and have something real crispy. So that's what I'm using right now. The ink that I'm using is actually um, a traditional brand ink uh, sponsored by Chris Garver, uh, Solid Ink. It's pretty, pretty solid. I ain't gonna lie. It flows pretty good. Um, it, it heals up very nice. It just doesn't have the same flow as like a dynamic black. So I will still stick with my dynamic black for all of my like lining things and like that. But as you see here, like I'm rubbing it down. I'm just going, I'm not going right on the line I pass. I'm actually going right next to the line. So I'm building up those, that line weight with two with two passes and then I go back in the center and then I will go in and bow that out to fill in any like gapage that may be there keeping the skin stretched keeping so the needle is out I like to ride the needle and not the tube so you can actually see exactly what's going on and I'm just using the tip of the needle I'm not putting much force or trauma down on the skin I'm just riding it out and um getting it done so in this first phase you don't really have to make everything perfect perfect you just want to you know make sure your stencil doesn't go away you want to have a nice blueprint for the finished product taking slow and steady building it up see here i was thinking like hey i was probably going to start to do the drop shadow with the full lining and shade that in there that way but I decided against it, so I was just like, I'm gonna do a quick lining and finish it up. That's why I started off with such a thicker outline on the bottom because I was just gonna just go straight into it, just dive in and start shading. But um, it'd be more effective to use a mag needle, and I'm actually gonna be using a curved mag for this setup. I find that uh, 15 mag works really good. Uh, 11 would be better, even better. Um, and what I'm using on this tattoo is actually 11 mag. Once we get to that portion of the piece. So let me see if we can actually like zoom in here now. You can check out like how exactly close we're going with this. Now, if you notice closely what I'm lining, I'm not going straight up down the center line of this stencil. I'm actually picking the left or right side to start my line work in when I'm sculpting because you're going up the middle, then you just have to go on the left and right side of the starter line instead of just building up those that 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 thickness, that line weight. 
So I'll make sure when you ever, ever, ever you're going to build up your line weight to make sure you have a good starting part of that stencil and don't just go ripping right up the middle because that would just start to swell it up a lot more and harder to build up that without causing scar tissue. So you hit the outside, you see now this time on this one, I started on the inside of that instead of the outside. So just a couple of tent, hint, hints and tricks to make tattooing a little bit easier. Make sure everything you do is, is well thought out and, and you know what you're gonna do as you're going into this. There you see, now I'm doing little circles to fill in those double lines I just did. And voila, there you go. Nice black solid line. And this is a black person I'm tattooing right now. And our skin tends to swell up a little bit faster. So don't be scared if you're going over a tattoo and say it doesn't look like it's dark enough. It doesn't look like it's packed in enough. Just keep going. And then go back to it and you better check it out and see what was actually done there and you can go and touch things up. You don't want to overwork no area at all. But so far so good. It's sitting like a champ. Very, very good client. And this is the inner bicep by the way, so it's really thin tissue and that tends to be a real sensitive area and also an area that, that swells up and gets inflamed a lot while tattooing this area. So you gotta be very delicate with this area. Okay, here we go. About to run a marathon. Pulling that line all the way to the end. Here it goes. Bow. That was beautiful. That was uh, satisfying, if I do say so myself. Very, very satisfying pulling that line. So I'm saying I can never get enough of line work, you know? Lines, dot shading, things like that. It's just so satisfying to watch it get done. If you haven't seen anything like that, check out the other videos I have posted. Oh, and you'll see how satisfying it is just to see some clean lines go in. I got a couple of um, time lapse videos. You can check those out. And these are just satisfying things to watch. You know, not much information on them, but very, very satisfying to see you uh, start to finish project when you're just laying in those lines, man. I tell you. And what I'm going to start doing now is small circular mushrooms down the center of the line here. Um, I have scoped out two outer lines. This is for those people who were not too comfortable um, scoping out right near each other. So I had left a little gap in between just to go back in with smaller circular mushrooms, as you see here, to just fill in the empty space between the lines. And that would give it a nice, solid, bold look.
know. I just put out the 15 mag for this. I am going to fill in this drop shadow here. It is a curved mag. And this is gonna be really, really nice to just pack it in there and have a good, dark, deep black saturation. And as you can check it out here, I'm just shoveling it in back and forth. And then I will turn it on its side so you get closer to those edges for that fine detail work to just get tight up to the edge of that line work that we put in there. And just like a little painterly view is what I'm doing, just smooth forward and backward strokes. What I'm currently using is the Mass Tool Pro. I'm running this machine on a seven using the Dragon Hawk's wireless battery pack that attaches directly to the Mass Tour Pro. And I prefer using this for smaller pieces just because it's we just like drawing. It keeps it simple, keeps it clean, uh, wires out the way. You don't have to worry about a lot of setup and breakdown things. So the, it's actually a very, very good power supply type to use if you don't use a power pack, just wireless battery power. It lasts on average about three hours. I recommend if you're gonna do a long tattoo session that's over three hours, or actually over around every two hours and switch it out. Because as I notice, the longer the tattoo sessions go, that if the battery starts getting low, it loses its power. It doesn't have the same amount of, of punch that it has when it's fully charged. So I'd like to keep two and switch them out about every two hours and keep them charged that way. And as we're getting to the final stretch of this, I'm gonna just clean this tattoo up, give it a full nice wipe down, rub it down with Vaseline. Um, I use Vaseline only while tattooing, not while it's healing for aftercare, because I'm constantly wiping the tattoo away. So I'm constantly wiping Vaseline off of there. And it just keeps it lubricated as I go in to tattoo the client. It makes it a much smoother and easier way of tattooing. As also the Vaseline serves as a way to help the ink not spread or splatter as you're tattooing. So that's another good, helpful hint and trick that you will use that you may need while tattooing. Well, let's go ahead and uh, clean this thing up and see what we got.
Hey guys, so this is pretty much the end of the video. Uh, make sure if you like this or learned anything to hit that subscribe button for I'll be having a lot more videos popped up and showing you guys on um, tutorials and hints and tricks and things like that of the trade. But check it out. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If I did crispy line work or I needed to work on it, let me know. Appreciate it.